All right, so in this video, we're going to address the issue of this stretch texture. Now, this texture is being put on here using surface noise, which is awesome. I think that's a great way to do this. However, the UVs on this object are not set up to make that work. So it would be ideal to set up the UVs first. Now, barring actually creating new UVs here inside of ZBrush, I'm gonna to totally skip that and not do that, but we're gonna go ahead and use Spotlight to put this on here. It's not nearly as effective, uh, but it will work well enough for what we need. Um, and I personally like it because you can put scuffs and dings and stuff in it afterwards and kind of clean up some of the artifacts that we're gonna get on here. Uh, said texture that we're gonna put on here is this one. So this is what we're gonna use. All right, so inside of ZBrush, uh, I have my little hat thing going on here. Um, I do have this little pink area down here on the bottom set up so that if I wanted to send this over to uh, Maya, I could actually set up UVs for this very easily. So let me show you that really quickly. So inside of the Z plugins, okay, I'm coming down here to UV Master. You can say unwrap, but make sure that polygroups is turned on. And when you do this, so I've hit that button, it's created UVs, go over to the UV map, Take my bump, I'm gonna drop that all the way down, and hit Morph UV. So now I have two distinct UV shells that I can actually use. Now, if this is perfectly lined up and ready to go, that's awesome, that helps a lot because then we can just use the same technique and just paint straight across it, or use the uh, surface noise and make sure that it's lined up with this and it'll be good to go. It won't take too much to actually deal with. I'm gonna send that back. But barring creating UVs elsewhere, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use the spotlight. So to do that, go up into texture, import your texture. I already have it imported, which is awesome. So it's this one right here. To add it to Spotlight, I'm gonna hit this button right here. So I'll hit that guy. Now I have this in here, which is good to go. I can change the size of this if I need to. Now, if there is uh, artifacting that you see inside of the actual image, you can change that by clicking on, let me click right in the middle of this to move it up so you can see it, right? There's an intensity value right here. If I click that and if I drag it, you can see I get pure black which black and white is gonna be fine. Um, it's just gonna check its uh, value and that's how it's gonna, we're gonna sculpt through this. But I can turn this till I get something that's kind of like right there-ish is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna click on that to turn intensity off and I can just put this on screen and I can change the size to about like so. The size of your object, the resolution of your object, the size of your texture and the resolution of your texture are all important. So you may get artifacting depending on any of those four factors. Now I wanna paint through this onto my actual object. So to do that, I'm gonna press the Z, Z key on the keyboard, and that will allow me to then get back into 3D mode. All right, so I'm gonna line this up about like so, get pretty close with it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some subdivisions, so we'll go to geometry, divide, 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 divide. I'm gonna keep dividing. I've got points up here in the top left. Now, if you can't see this, hold the control key until you get these little arrows somewhere up here and you can click and drag and you should be able to slide this over to you can see your points. Now I usually shoot, at least for an object like this, somewhere around the two million mark because this is gonna be nice clean geometry. And I can line this up about like so, whoops, like that. Okay, now I'm gonna use a layer brush. So B, L, this layer brush. Now the reason I'm gonna use this layer brush is because it will pull up off the surface a certain amount and then it will not pull it any farther as long as I don't lift up my brush. Okay, so this is gonna help reduce the number of artifacts that we have, right? So the other thing I can do is take my alpha and I'm just gonna make it, let's just say no alpha, I don't necessarily need one. Um, and then my focal shift, I'm just gonna make sure that it's a hard edge, like so. I'm gonna go and turn my polyframe off, make my brush about yay big. Now the intensity value of this is how far this is gonna be pulled off the surface. So now if I click and drag on here, you can see I can start to actually sculpt this up. Now the problem is, the further I go to the edge, we're gonna start seeing that stretching, right? So we have to look at this thing like dead on like most of the time. And also it's nice to have that poly group right there, right? So, you know, do two or three of these like so. And I'm gonna be really careful about kind of where I quit my sculpting. So I'm gonna try and make it the center of this specific design right here. So I'm kind of stopping right there and right there. So there's that. So then what I need to do is just grab my object, rotate it, and then I can line that back up. And there's no way to get this like perfect. Like you're just gonna to have to kind of eyeball it but it will allow us to then continue. And I'm gonna be real careful right at that edge. Whoops, let's make sure that we're looking at it straight on as much as we can. All right, we'll fiddle with those parts here in a minute. Oh, here's a trick too. I'm gonna to go ahead and turn this Y. I've snapped this, right? So I'm using this guy up here actually. I'm gonna snap this so I'm looking at it straight at the edge and I'm going to make sure that this Y is turned on and it'll make it a little easier to kind of rotate this 
to the angle I want. That should work pretty well. And then I can go ahead and continue to sculpt about there-ish. And I can kind of get this. Now again, this isn't going to be perfect, right? You have to try and line this up. So again, having that those UV set up prior was going to make this a lot easier to deal with. But you can do this if you really need to. Now there are a couple other ways you can actually address this. Like there's like five or six actually. Um, but this is one direction you can kind of brute force it. There we go. Kind of line that up a little bit better, right? So cool. So there's a little bit of like carryover here, but scuffs, dings, dents, anything that you want to put on there. Um, if it's supposed to be pristine, this is not a method that's going to work really, really well. Uh, but try and line this up like so. Okay, and I'm looking right here where my cursor is. And I can do this right there. Come around here, right? Oh, and my Z intensity changed, so I'm going to get differences in there, right? Now, if you've got 2021, or sorry, 2020, I think it's a 2021, there's actually a little thing in here called thick skin. Um, this will help alleviate the difference in the height that you're getting in this. Just so that you're aware, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. So if I turn this on, I'm going to set my thick skin to something like, I don't know, 10. will probably work, right? And if I click and drag on this, right, and I lift my cursor, and I click and drag on it again, it's never going to go any higher than that specific height. It'll always be that height. So this thick skin thing is great for doing something specifically like this, right? Um, and there is also like an adjust last that you have in here as well from this newest feature, which is also really kind of nice. So a couple extra features if you decide to go ahead and upgrade that may help with this specific setup. Um, if you want help with UVs, let me know. I can, we can do something on that one too.